Hey everyone, uh, it's James. I'm gonna be making bread, sourdough bread. A lot of people are sort of taking over sourdough in as much as like hipsters on Instagram and YouTube going, it's so complex, you need such skill and finesse. I haven't got skill and I haven't got any finesse at all. But sourdough's not that hard to do. It's quite straightforward. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm gonna try and show you the best version that I've got to try and give you a pretty foolproof sourdough. So you wanna make a starter, it's pretty straightforward, okay? What you're gonna need is flour to start with. I like to use a mix of 50-50, strong white flour, but then also 50 of the wholemeal flour. Basically, it gives the yeast a little bit more to munch on. 100 grams of plain white, of the strong white flour, 100 grams of the wholemeal flour in a bowl. Next, just under 200 grams, maybe 180 grams of warm water just some warm water, put it in, mix it all together. It should form like a batter, like a thickish batter, like a pancake batter, but like American pancakes, not runny crips. Um, then what you wanna do with that, bit of cling film over the top of the bowl, put it to the side, just leave it. Two, three days. In two, three days, it's gonna start bubbling. Basically, the yeast is going to start eating things in the flour, little microbes and bits of bacteria, and it's going to start farting. It's going to be farting all day long, and it's going to cause loads of bubbles, and that, them bubbles are what we need to get air into your bread. So you've got a starter. Now we can start making bread. The first thing you need to do is make a levine, or a levant, or a leven, or a levan. It's something like that. Anyway, you'll need to put into a bowl two tablespoons of your starter, 200 grams of warm water, and 200 grams of flour. Either straight up white flour or a mix of say 150 grams of strong white flour and 50 grams of wholemeal. It's basically like a yeasty flour soup. Stick this in a bag and leave it overnight for about 12 hours. The next morning, you've got this lovely little mixture. It should be bubbling and foaming. To test it's got enough air in it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a floating test. Take a little bit of water in a cup or a jar and put a tablespoon of the Levine into it and it should float on the surface like this. Next up, we'll make our dough. Now, we need a kilo of flour. I'm doing a mix of 750 grams of strong white bread flour and 250 grams of wholemeal flour. Give that a lovely mix with your little mitts. And then in a bowl, measure out 700 grams of warm water. Add to that 200 grams of your living. Look at it, floating on the surface there. Quite trippy, really. Like something you'd see on a If You're High Instagram account. Let's just take a moment to look at that. Wow. Okay, give it a little mixy mix with your hand, dissolve it in the water. And then if you put a little well in the middle of your flour like this, and then add this mixture to it. Get your hands in that dough and start to bring things together. It's gonna to be wet and that's fine, okay? We're just looking to get the flour wet at the moment, hydrate it. Going for my first bash at a Nigella moment here. Sensually. Okay, now nah, that's not nice, is it? Right, now get a clean towel, dampen it, and cover your dough, and leave it for, let's say, sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, just so that the flour can fully absorb all the water. Now, we've got to add some salt to our bread. If you don't add salt, it's just gonna have no flavor, and it'll just taste horrible. So you need to add some salt. So what we're gonna do here is add 20 grams of salt to this jar, and then mix it up with about 50 grams of warm water. Mix it up, dissolve it, make a nice salt solution. Very sciencey. Now, pour this onto your dough, and to incorporate it, just start giving it a good prod. Prod it all in. If you've got trypophobia, I can only apologize for this. Mash it all into the dough, basically. Now, to really incorporate everything together and start building some gluten, we're gonna start applying this motion that you can see here. I'm holding the bowl up so that the dough slides to the bottom of the bowl and then get your hand underneath the dough in a cup shape. Start rapidly moving the dough like this. It's 
going to really work your arms and it's going to make some absolutely excellent noises. Have a little listen to this noise. We're going to start really building some gluten into your dough now with a good technique I like to call the slap and fold. So what you're going to do is slap the dough down onto the surface and then try and fold it over on top of itself. Pick it up on the sides and then repeat. Slap it down and fold it. And just keep doing this. Slap and fold, 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 slap and fold. Oh my god, this is killing my back. Get it back in that bowl, cover it up, and leave it half an hour. Oh my God, it's coming together. A little less aggressive than its predecessor, the stretch and fold will really help with some gluten development and help therefore incorporate more air into your dough. So what we're gonna do is every 30 minutes for three hours, you're gonna take your dough out of its bag, gonna wet your hand and do the following. We're gonna stretch it up, and then fold it over. Stretch it up and fold it over. Go around the whole bowl doing this, and then once you've done it, put it back in its bag and leave it half an hour. Now, at this point, my camera battery died. I did do this another four times, but obviously I haven't got video evidence of it, so you're just gonna have to trust the fact that I did do it, and it came out looking lovely and wobbly and stretchy and soft and no, it just nice, really nice, really nice dough. Okay, so we're going to start shaping the loaves now. It's going to get a little bit technical, but what you want is your dough to be looking like this, nice and stretchy, but a little bit wobbly as well. And um, we're going to turn it out onto the surface. Now, we've used a kilo of flour, and that's going to get us two loaves. So when you've turned it out, flour the surface, flour a little line down the middle of the dough. I'm using a bench scraper, um, but you can just use a knife if you haven't got a bench scraper. And then what you need to do is start sort of manipulating the balls round at the sides to try and make them more rounded. It's really, really starting to come together now. Sourdoughs are gonna work very well, very, very well. Feeling very confident about these little bad boys at the moment. Uh, cover them with a damp towel and let them relax for five minutes. When you come back, you're gonna go through a certain process to shape the loaf. So what you wanna do is flour the top of it, give it a little rub over the top, just make sure the flour's all the way over. Right, now, take the shaping baskets like this, and if you haven't got a shaping basket, that's fine, just use a bowl. Um, put a clean kitchen towel into it, and flour it to hell and back. Lots of flour, seriously, like loads of flour. Like, we're running out of flour, sure, but use as much as you can. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make almost like an envelope shape. So you're gonna fold it up from the bottom to meet the middle, and then in at each side, and then the last fold is one big fold all the way from the front, all the way over the other folds. And you should end up with something like that. It should have a little bum hole at each end. Get them back into the bags once they're in the proving container, I suppose, and let them prove for four hours or you could prove them overnight in the fridge. So you've got your loaf. It's been in the basket. It's been getting a bit of shape. Uh, we're going to turn it out now onto a piece of baking paper. So if you just flour the top where it's going to touch the baking paper and flip it out onto it. Now, I remember a few moments ago when I said to flour it to hell and back, that's because this sort of thing can happen. Obviously the towel has got stuck to the dough and it's causing all hell to break loose, to be honest. Then you need to try and put a slit uh, into the top of the dough so it helps when it's cooking and it gives it some room. Use a sharp knife or a blade. I mean, uh, to be honest, I'm making things worse on mine, um, as you can quite clearly see. Then we're gonna move it down to the oven. Now, I've got a pizza stone with a metal bowl on it. Yeah, mad. Basically, both of them have been in the oven for 20 minutes, as hot as your oven's gonna go. As hot as your oven's gonna go, have it up at that temperature. Pop this bread on the pizza stone, put the metal bowl over the top, and then cook it in there for 20 minutes. 
Now, we've got our 20 minute cook done and all the steam and stuff has helped that dough rise a little bit more. Uh, after that, take the bowl off, leave it in there for another 20 minutes so that the crust will be nice and crispy. So I've been making sourdough, um, but I mean, the reality of this is, is I've failed. The dough I think was too wet. I'm not advanced enough yet to do that. Do you remember this guy earlier? I think that these sourdoughs are gonna work very well. Very, very well. He was talking rubbish. It is hard to make sourdough, and I've gone mad thinking that I can do it on my first attempt. So this is what I ended up with. This, which as you can see is sort of flat. I mean, at the same time, there is some like aeration in there. The whole idea of using a pizza stone with a bowl on top, I don't think it works. I think you need a casserole dish cast iron Dutch oven type thing. It's not always gonna work, okay? And at the end of the day, I'd rather show the fact that I've failed at it than not, than just cover it up and go, yeah, actually it worked absolutely brilliantly and make another life. So I failed on this occasion. It's my first video and I failed. Is that gonna make you wanna come back and see more? I hope so. On this occasion, I absolutely fucked it. So excellent, excellent work. Um, join me next time. I'm gonna try and make something more simple. Keep it start simple, and then we'll work our way up to doing artisanal breads. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm.